you guys are in notes for today. Today's going to feel like more of the same, which is hopefully a good thing. Uh, we'll do some more practice with this, make sure you guys are confident with it. Um, before we move on to something new. You guys can take a minute to look at the warm-up question. Then take attendance. on the last test. So being able to get it into y equals mx plus b, kind of being comfortable with that, again, I think, you know, I said, I'll probably ask you guys to solve for y like a thousand times this year, and if you haven't kind of caught on to that, I wasn't really lying about that. It's something we do an awful lot um, in this class. So, um, and like I said, on that last test, it was probably a little bit of a struggle, even though I kind of warned you it would be a big chunk of what we're going to be doing. So what did you guys do first in this one to solve for y? Yeah, what are we going to do? Yeah, so move that 2x over to begin with. So on the left side, we're left with a negative 3y. On the right side, how did you guys write that? Order did you put that in? Yeah. I put negative two x uh, plus eight. Yeah, putting that negative two x first is a little more helpful because of the fact that we want it to be that m x plus b. Now it wouldn't be wrong if you put six minus two x. It just makes it a little bit easier to find m and b. Okay. Okay. And then to get our y alone, this is being multiplied. So instead, we're going to divide. Divide by negative 3, but I have to divide everything by negative 3. And that was another thing on that test. You had to do one very similar to this. And a lot of people forgot to divide the 2 by 3, I think, because it just isn't like a nice number. You're like, I'll just skip that, or don't realize it's not divisible by 3, and so you think maybe I can just overlook it. Um, that cancels. 
but we don't mind that slope as a fraction. We kind of actually like it that way because that's our rise over our run. So we're left with y. And then these two negatives, I'm going to write that as a positive 2 thirds. And then my b is going to be 6 over negative 3, which is a negative 2. So I can tell what m is very easily. I can tell what b is. So again, those of you guys thinking about retaking the last chapter test, this is probably something that you probably did struggle on. So I wanted to kind of reiterate it and make sure you guys are feeling comfortable or more comfortable or trying to remember that it is important is what we're doing. So um, like I said, today's going to feel very, very similar to yesterday. Um, so when we go through this, um, it's just basically we're doing yesterday's work with a little bit worse numbers. So. Um, you might want a calculator today because not everything works out to be nice whole numbers or most things today are going to work out to be decimals, um, which is, I know, frustrating, but at the same time, most things in life, when you go to the grocery store, it's not like we have a nice whole number answer every single time we, you know, they don't say it's just $20 and there's no change having to be given. I mean, that's just the way things are. Um, hardly ever is it just like a perfect exact number and it's probably more rare. So, we're working on the slope-intercept form again, but now today, the, like I said, the numbers won't work out to be quite as nice. So, slope-intercept form is that y equals mx plus b. And again, here they're giving us the slope and the point, and I need to find our b. Now, as you guys are doing this, this one doesn't work out to be terrible, but it's also not a nice whole number. So um, when you go to put this all into y equals mx plus b, the y is our 10, our m is a half, but the x is 7, and half of 7 is not a whole number, but it's also not like a ridiculous decimal or anything like that repeating on forever. So half of 7 is going to be 3.5. Now my other class is talking about this because some students were rattling off like half of numbers very quickly and then somebody else was like, how do you know that so fast? Just a reminder that when you're taking half of something, it's really like you're just dividing it by 2. Um, just breaking it in half. So we get 3.5 for this. So then when I go to move this over, we're just subtracting 3.5, which in this case, hopefully you're not like, oh my gosh, I need to grab my calculator. But if you do, it's fine. No judgment. I'm not like worried that you have to. Um, sometimes just the fact that calculator is sitting there, we check our math that way. Like a lot of times if you guys see me grading tests and I'm adding up your points at the end, I usually use a calculator because I'm so afraid of making a silly mistake and then your grades like, it was supposed to be an A and I told you you got like a C or a D because I added wrong, like that would be a little embarrassing. So I, I use a calculator as well um, when I'm nervous that I'm gonna make a silly mistake. So, um, so our B ends up being 6.5, which again isn't ideal, but it's not terrible. So then again, we put this back together again. problems like these that all don't work out to be perfect numbers. Um, you guys can work on with like your classmates and um, work through some of these. This next one does not work out to be quite as nice. So let's talk about this one. And this is similar to what our activity is going to be for today. So we did ones like this yesterday. And again, if this didn't go well yesterday, hopefully today we'll kind of like kind of seal that into your memory a little bit more. Just a reminder, we're testing on this in like two Mondays. So um, we want to make sure we're confident with it going into the end of the semester, just that you're kind of putting your best foot forward here at the end. So we need M and B. And if you guys recall yesterday, we talked about M. We have this great formula for that to help us. It's 
So again, I didn't make you memorize it just to make you memorize something. We use it quite a bit. But careful here. As I do my subtraction, lots of negatives and positives and kind of issues can come up here. So negative 6 minus a negative 4. And then we get negative 1 minus 5. So we get a negative 2 because this becomes plus 4. Bless you. And then this is a negative 6. Two negatives, what happens? Positive. Positive. And then two over six becomes one third. A positive one third. Right? So that's our M. So I'm already thinking about our one third, and one third does not work as nicely as one half. Like it just, it just what it is what it is. One third is a decimal, is a point three repeating. So it's likely that we're going to end up with kind of a crazy decimal in this case. So there's our M. We need to find B. I have a preference on which point we use. What's that? Uh, actually not, because the 6 is the Y. Oh, you, oh, you think 1 is easier? Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine, because yeah, because one times anything is just, no, I, that's a, I kind of thought of that. I, I just saw the negative, and I was automatically like, so let's not go with the negative. But I like the idea that, he said that really multiplying anything by one isn't that bad, so let's stick with that. That's fine. So x is negative one, and then y is negative six. I think on your paper yourself, you even used the other point. Now you're realizing. It will, it'll still work though. I'll tell you guys, if you guys use 5, negative 4, it will still work for you. It doesn't, it, it's not going to give you a different answer just because you used a different point. It's kind of why this is cool. It's like math cool, but not, you know, regular people cool. So y is negative 6. m is a third. x is negative 1. And then again, I don't know B, so I'm going to leave B as a variable. Now, negative one-third of, or one-third times negative one, it's just going to be a negative one-third. Now, at this point, when I start moving that one-third over, I'm going to add one-third, and I'm adding it to a whole number. I'm probably going to change it to a decimal now, but if you don't like... If you're, like, if you're really good at using your calculator for fractions, you're welcome to leave it as a fraction. Um, you don't need to, though. Like, so one-third is 0.3 repeating. The only thing I just ask is that you try to be, um, like, keep that repeating, like, there, just so that you remember that that's the case. So we're going to add one-third to each side, or add 0.3 to each side. So B, you're either going to get a negative, is it 5 and 2 thirds, right? Or, depending on if you use decimals or fraction, you know, fractions, a negative 5.67 or 6 repeating. So I'm going to call that 6, 7. Because 6 would tell me to round up to the next one. So to be a little bit more accurate than 5.6. Um, and then I did somebody leave it as a frac or improper to do new negative 17 over 3. Is that what it is? Yeah. So if you left it this way, that's fine with me as well. It's, it's, any of those are fine. Now, if you're like checking your answer like in the back of the book or checking with a friend, you just have to be aware that you could have different outcomes and different answers there. So finally, we have our M and B. Don't forget to go back and use the original M. So we can write this however the B that you used is fine. I typically, on the B, I'll usually use a decimal because if I was graphing this, a decimal is easier, I think. But I'm fine if you guys use the fraction. <coughs> so if you have that, that's fine. 
Seven thirds is fine, as, or 17 thirds, sorry, is fine as well. All right, let's do one more together. So let's flip over to the back side of this graph um, that kind of like leaves some like, kind of leaves us unknown here. So this is um, talking about what happens if the graphs don't work as nicely as they did yesterday. Oops, we'll get back to that. We're gonna do a dad joke riddle here. I'm missing my dad jokes here. So, why is this line harder than the ones we were doing yesterday? What's the issue here? Clayton? You don't see the, the y-intercept? Yep. Yeah, you don't see the y-intercept. The y-intercept, somewhere down here. Now, I could probably make a good guess of what the y-intercept should be, because like, I could probably try to extend my graph down and try to make it look like what it's supposed to be. But the y-intercept is kind of just unknown down here. I can't quite tell where it's going to touch the y-axis. So in a case like this, we might have a little bit more work to do. And that can happen. Like this, this is real that it could go off your graph, my little 10 by 10 graphs. It's not like every graph that exists is going to fit on just those little graphs that I give you. So this is possible that we could run off the graph that we started with. Now, as we're doing problems like this, I'm hoping you remember when you see a graph, the slope should be like, like you should still be good on slope, right? That the fact that it runs off the graph really doesn't matter to us because slope is right here for us. We can use these two points to help us find that slope. So don't let the slope like throw you off here. What's our slope going to be? Negative three over one or just negative three. Now maybe your estimation skills are really, really good, but maybe, maybe like picture this going like almost straight up and down where it, I can't tell at all where it's gonna hit. So you might say, well, I, I drew the graph and I know exactly where it's gonna hit for sure. Or maybe it doesn't hit as an exact coordinate. So um, just being aware that it might not be a whole number as our B. So the question is, how do we find B now? What are we going to do? I, Justine, go ahead. <laughs> you haven't used your morning voice yet. <laughs> yeah, so you can keep going one, two, three, and then over, and then you go one, two, three, over, kind of see where we're going to be. But again, it's kind of a little bit of an estimation because I don't really know if I can draw like a nice freehand graph. Okay, that's one way, but that might not be perfect. Does anyone have another way? There's a way to be exact with this, like to get an exact B value. So yesterday, or even going back to the first example we did today, what two things did they give us? In example one, what two things did they give us? The slope and a point. Do we have a point here? Yeah, we have two points that we could use. So I could use this point as my point to find my B. So I'm going to choose one of these points. So I'm going to use, um, what is that, negative 3, 2 as my X and Y. The graph gives me that information, so why not use it? So I know X and Y. I know all X and Y. Now, Justine's method would work probably for the most part. I'm just a little worried that it's not an exact coordinate point that this is going to cross at. Um, I think it actually is, but it's possible it wouldn't be. Um, so our x and y, bless you. So we have y equals mx plus b. So we're going to put our y in. Our m is negative 3. And our x is negative 3. So it does end up working out to be a nice number. And I guess we probably should have known that since the slope is a whole number. Um, so I'm going to subtract 9. So I find out my b would be seven, negative 7, which is probably what those of you guys who were doing some good estimation had figured out already. But I'm just trying to warn you, it's not always going to be a whole number. So be prepared that if you don't quite get a whole number as you're doing that, 
you might want to try this method as well. So there's our equation. All right, so um, what we are going to do now, we've done these before in here. Um, they're like little goofy worksheets that have the dad jokes on them. Um, now, they're typically kind of on the long side. These ones are 10 questions total. Um, so what I suggest you guys do is um, you can work with a couple friends. Um, so like groups of three is probably biggest we'd want. Um, but then you want to break that up. So like there's 10 questions. So I wouldn't say all of you guys start on number one. Maybe someone start at the top, someone start at the bottom, and try to see if you guys can meet somewhere in the middle or you know, kind of try to figure it out. I am going to warn you guys, the ones on the bottom are probably a little tougher. So if you're like, I'm confident on this stuff, I need a challenge, try the bottom ones. Um, but what we're going to do then is kind of come back together and find our answers. So um, it gives you guys a chance to talk about it. It doesn't have a ton of room to write on here. So if you want a whiteboard, you can always grab one. So um, yeah, so you're looking for the answer that goes with your little, your two points here. Um, and you can feel free to kind of move desks, get up and kind of adjust where you guys are, sorry. Um, we probably could even throw a few guys next door. I mean, just because we have that other room that's, I believe, available. Those of you guys online, I'm gonna pause here. Okay, so you take one for the team there. <laughs> Let me I'll open the door next door. 